pretty good reading month in August. I managed to read 14 things and I enjoyed most of what I read this month. There was only one thing that I really didn't enjoy and I will go ahead and start with that and get it out of the way. So this was a two star read and that is The Day of the Duchess by Sarah McLean. This is the third book in the Scandal and Scoundrel series written by Sarah McLean. Like I mentioned in my July wrap up, I have been part of a group that was reading Sarah McLean's works in publication order and I discovered that I do not enjoy Sarah McLean's writing style. I know that a lot of people really love this series and that Sarah McLean is a beloved author and so I'm going to try to keep this really short and respectful and just basically say that I do not enjoy this author's writing style. I feel like her work is overwritten for me. Um, she repeats a lot of words and phrases that I do not enjoy, particularly in her steamy scenes and a lot of her characters end up seeming the same to me. Like, I just this book was really really bad for me. I didn't enjoy it at all. The only reason why I gave it two stars is because I know that she's a beloved author and I can admit that maybe there's just something that I am not seeing that everyone else has seen and also the sibling group in here there's a group of sisters that are really enjoyable and they were really the only thing that was good about this book. Um, I guess you might want to know what this is about huh? It is a, um, it's a historical romance. It's a marriage in trouble. It is about this couple that basically fell in love. So the man, the Duke of Haven, never went to Seraphina's father and asked for his permission to marry her. He never like officially courted her. They just sort of kept everything secret. And so she began to doubt his intentions and think that maybe he was just messing around with her. Her, her mother kind of like talked her into that. And so she ended up trapping him into marriage basically and he found out he was very very resentful and gave her the cold shoulder and just a whole bunch of terrible stuff happened after that. Neither one of them were very great characters in my eyes, particularly the Duke. I never liked him as a character. I don't think that he ever made up for all of his actions throughout this book and he does appear in a previous book in this series. Um, I don't think he ever, he never makes up for any of his terrible behavior to me. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it for that long. So, yeah, I don't enjoy this author's writing style. I do own the last series that just came out, um, that just finished. It's a trilogy by this author. I already own all three of the books. I don't know what I'm going to do about them. I stopped reading along with the group because I just wasn't enjoying the books anymore. Um, but I feel like at some point I will probably pick up that final trilogy because I do own it. So I just, I don't know when. I'm definitely taking a long break from this author. Okay, now let's go into my three star reads starting with Real Men Knit by Quana Jackson. So this is a book that I actually received from NetGalley. However, I was late in reading it. So this has already come out. It came out in May, I believe. So this book is following a group of young people in Harlem. It centers around a knitting shop in Harlem and the shop owner has just passed away leaving her four adoptive sons in charge of the shop. There is a girl named Carrie who has always worked in the shop as well and she is really heartbroken that this woman Mama Joy has passed away. Their whole community is basically brokenhearted over this because Mama Joy was really a center of the community and anyway, so after she passes away, the four sons are left with a decision of what to do with the shop, if they should keep it open or if they s should sell it. And so that's basically what the book revolves around, um, as well as Carrie, the girl who is always around as well. She really wants the shop to stay open. Um, she has been basically pining for the youngest strong son whose name is Jesse for years and so this book was pitched as like their relationship their romance um, but I feel like their romance was a pretty small part of the book this really was more of like a family story about the strong 
family, which I really enjoyed that aspect of the brothers and the tight-knit community. And I really enjoyed the talks about knitting. The reason why I gave this a three star is because I really enjoy the concept of this book and I really like all those aspects that I said about it, but it was very slow and very repetitive. So I feel like we learned everything that we needed to know and like the first few chapters and then those things just kind of got repeated over and over and over. Um, the romance, I never really felt a big chemistry between the two characters that were supposed to be in love. And yeah, it was just sort of a letdown, honestly. Um, there wasn't anything like horribly wrong with it. Like I said, it had potential. It just ended up being a bit boring. The next three star read is Make Mine a Cowboy by A.J. Pine. This is the second book in the Meadow Valley series. And this I also received from NetGalley. It came out on August the 25th, so it is available if it's something that you are interested in reading. This one is a small town cowboy romance, and it follows a young woman whose name is Charlotte. She is a doctor, and she is a doctor in New York. Her grandmother back in Meadow Valley has just had a fall, and she needs help running her bed and breakfast back there. So Charlotte takes off back to Meadow Valley to go and help her grandmother. She runs into Ben Callahan, who is like a rancher and someone that she had like a very short-term relationship with the last time she was in town visiting her grandmother. So they sort of have a history, um, but they were never intending to be serious. But this time when they run into each other, there's still those sparks and yeah, so obviously it's their romance, and I really enjoyed the small town aspect of this one. I enjoyed all the talk of the bed and breakfast. I love Charlotte's grandmother. I love I love grandmother characters. I love it when grandmothers are in books. However, I felt like the story of this one was a little bit boring as well and repetitive. It seemed like they just rehashed the same things over and over, and I do feel like Charlotte's character was not very consistent she was supposed to be a pediatrician and supposed to be really good at her job, but she just didn't come across very responsible a lot of the times. She didn't know what to do for a hangover. And I feel like if you're a doctor that you probably know what to do for a hangover. There was just stuff like that where she seemed like she should know more like health stuff that came up than she did. Um, I don't know, she seemed like really out of sorts about like her mother, her grandmother's fall and how much help she would need, even though, you know, she's a doctor. I, there was just some things that I felt like she should have known sometime. And then, and then there was like a turn where at the end, she started spouting off all these like doctory facts and scientific facts at people. And she didn't do that at the beginning of the book. So I don't know. It's just like she made a shift and she became this really like doctory fact for person towards the end. So that was a little bit annoying to me. Um, but the romance was pretty good. There were some really good romantic moments in here that I felt like were pretty swoony. And I did like the epilogue and the way that everything tied up nicely. So this one was like mediocre. I, it wasn't bad but it wasn't like blow your socks off or anything. Next up is The Terminal Man by Michael Crichton. So this is Michael Crichton's second published work and the second of his books that I've read. So this one follows a man who has what they call psychomotor epilepsy. I think that that is an outdated term, but now I, I'm not sure what they call that um, in today's term terminology. When this man has seizures, he ends up doing, he like basically blacks out. He doesn't know what's happened that whole entire time. And he has become more and more violent during his seizures, but he has no idea what he did during those times. Um, and this man also is like borderline psychotic. He has these issues with machines where he thinks that machines are trying to take over the world. So this man has been put forth for this brand new medical procedure that this team of doctors in California has been working on where they want to hook up this mini computer 
to a person's brain who has epilepsy. They work these different receptors in there to figure out which one needs to be pressed basically when they are about to have a seizure to cause it not to happen. So yeah, um, I think that this had a really cool concept. I was really interested in this to find out how it was going to happen. I think that Michael Crichton has really interesting ideas on stuff that could happen in science and technology that make his books really intriguing. However, this one I feel like again just became a little bit boring and repetitive. I would recommend this if you were interested in Michael Crichton's works at all. It was definitely interesting and I'm glad that I read it. It just was not compelling the whole way through if that makes sense. Out of the two of his that I've read um, between this one and the Andromeda Strain, I definitely enjoyed the Andromeda Strain more than this one. So there's that. The next three-star read is Castle on the Hill by Agatha Frost and Evelyn Amber. This is the second book in the Scarlet Cove mystery series and this was one of the sequels that I had planned on reading during the month of August so I didn't get as many sequels read as I had originally planned but I did get this one read and um, a couple other ones too so there's that but anyway so this one returns back to Scarlet Cove and our main character whose name is Liz this one takes place right around Halloween there's like this big gathering around this castle on the hill um, there are all these like creepy folk tales I guess you would say um, local legends about this castle and they all say that um, a person was beheaded at this castle you know hundreds of years before and while everyone is there gathered on this particular night a murder occurs Liz of course is the person who finds the body and then a big mystery um, who done it you know goes down so I really enjoyed that this one was set during the fall. So this town, I can just imagine, would be absolutely beautiful during the fall. I loved all the cozy fall vibes that were happening in here. This would have been a perfect book to read during the fall. Too bad I read it in the summer. But anyway, it was still really good. Um, I preferred the first book in the series more. I do enjoy Liz's character but I felt like she didn't, we didn't get to know that much more about her during this book than we had already known in the previous book. And I didn't enjoy this mystery quite as much. I didn't enjoy all the aspects to this mystery as much as I enjoyed the first mystery. I still would recommend this series and I'm definitely planning on reading the third book at some point. Then I read another sequel and another three-star book and that's Wild Card by Marie Lu. This is the second and final book in the Warcross duology and this this one so I can't really tell you too much about what happens in this book because it would be spoilery for the first book but so Warcross is basically about this virtual reality game that people are like obsessed with during this time period. Um, I never really understood if this was supposed to be like a dystopian war world that was just really technologically advanced or if this is supposed to be set in the future. That was one of my main problems with the series is that I didn't feel like the world was ever completely explained or fleshed out fully to where I had a full grasp of everything that was going on. I mean there were some things that were explained and some things that were really interesting but it just it didn't all come together for me in my opinion but um, yeah so wild card was an interesting conclusion there were some things that I felt were done really well there were some things from the first book that I felt like were flipped on their head in this one I was surprised by some of the outcomes in the book um, there were an introduction of a couple extra characters in here that I really enjoyed learning about um, but essentially the main character, Emika, she was sort of just pulled along through all the action. Like I didn't feel like she was ever truly making decisions or figuring things out on her own. She was basically led along from thing to thing by either the villain of the story or by her friends in the story. And 
it wasn't really guiding the story. Her actions never really felt like they were guiding the story. I think I liked this one slightly better than Warcross. If it's something that seems like it might be interesting to you, like a big virtual reality, um, there's this thing called the Neuralink where you can visit places virtually. There's like bounty hunters. Um, there's like a dark underworld. You can look different in the you know, the virtual world than you look in real life. This was like pitched as a young adult Ready Player One, but really I feel like they were written on the same level. This one, um, Emika was like 18 to 20, I'm not sure, but I mean, she was not a, really a teen. She was out of school and I feel like this could easily be for adults too, but. Next up is Rilla of Ingleside by L.M. Montgomery. This is the eighth and final book in the Anne of Green Gables series and the conclusion to the Anne Along 2020 that where we read through the entire series this year. So this one follows Anne's daughter Rilla as she is sort of coming of age. This takes place during World War One, which was really interesting to be able to see World War One through um, the lens of a Canadian young woman. I, this one was very sad in spots. You learned what all was happening to Anne's children during the war, um, what all was happening in the world during the war. I really enjoyed Rilla as a character. I loved her growth. I felt like she grew a lot over the span of this book and it was sad and heartwarming, interesting, all of those things. Um, I would say that this is like a three and a half star if I'm allowed to give half stars. My main complaint was with this book was that um, there is a housekeeper in this book. Her name is Susan and she just she talked so much in this book. She was constantly giving her opinions on everything that was going on and she had like her cousin was with her a lot of the time and she was always jabbering on and they just bogged down so much of the book for me. I personally would have preferred to have heard more opinions from Anne and her husband rather than the housekeeper and the housekeeper's cousin who really didn't have any effect on this family, which was who we were supposed to be learning about. I think that this was a good conclusion to the series. I also, um, in September, have finished the biography of Ellen Montgomery. And so I did learn that this book was written way before some of the other books in the series, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I didn't realize that she had written this so much before, um, like Anne of Ingleside even. And it's just crazy to me that she was able to write, you know, her Anne's grown up daughter story before she filled, went in and filled back in all of Anne's backstory. But anyway, I'm glad to say that I read this series this year. It's definitely something that I have been wanting to do. And if you are interested in reading the Anne of Green Gables series, I would definitely recommend it. And thanks to everyone who read along with us this year. I had a great time over in the Goodreads group discussing everything with you. You definitely kept me on track and I really appreciate every single one of you who read along with us, even if you didn't ever comment in the Good Goodreads group. I've enjoyed seeing people's videos and posts on Instagram. So yeah, thanks so much for making this a great read along. I really appreciate it. Now moving into four star reads. So we have The Little Bookshop of Love Stories by Jamie Admans. Now this is a book that I had through NetGalley and it came out in May. Um, so if it's one that you're interested in, you can definitely go ahead and pick up a copy of it. This one follows a young woman named Haley. And Haley has just basically won a bookshop. So her favorite bookstore, the owner has reached retirement age. I think he was in his seventies or eighties and decided to basically raffle off the books, the bookshop. And so Haley is the one who won the bookstore. She considers herself to be a klutz with really bad luck. No, nothing ever seems to go her way. So she's extremely amazed that she has won this bookshop. It even comes with like an apartment above the bookshop. So she doesn't have to worry about where to live anymore. So she immediately packs up all of her stuff and she moves into the bookshop. On her very first day there, a very handsome and very clumsy young man named Dimitri falls through the door they become fast friends 
and they just sort of begin to work together on how to keep the bookshop running and it's just the story of, of this bookshop basically I think that's why I gave it four stars. The bookshop was adorable. I loved all the talk about the books and organizing the books and keeping the bookshop running. And I really enjoy the characters of Haley and Dimitri. This is a super, super sweet romance. Although I would say the romance is sort of small, a smaller part of this. It's really more about Haley and her journey of like, getting her life together, I guess you could say, and getting the bookshop back on its feet. If you are thinking about reading this, I would definitely say to go into it expecting a whole lot of sweetness, a whole lot of like rainbows and sparkles and glitters and happiness everywhere. Like even the serious topics that were covered were never too serious. I felt like this was just a really happy-go-lucky story. It's nothing too deep, but it was a lot of fun, especially with the bookshop setting. Okay, then I have How the Duke Stole Christmas. This is a bind up of four different Christmas novellas by Tessa Dare, Sarah McLean, Sophie Jordan, and Joanna Shoup. So this was also read for that Summer of Sarah McLean read-along that I was participating in. And this is was actually a reread for me, and I enjoyed it the first time I read it, and I enjoyed it the second time I read it for sure. Um, as you may guess, the story by Sarah McLean was my least favorite out of these, but they were all pretty enjoyable stories. I mean, like I said, Sarah's I didn't enjoy as much because I don't enjoy her writing style. I do feel like her story in here was overwritten. It was by far the longest story out of the four. Um, Tessa Dare's story was adorable. I definitely need to read more by her. And I also love Sophie Jordan's and Joanna Shoup's as well, but I still haven't read anything else by them. So if you have recommendations for those authors, Tessa, Tessa Dare, Sophie Jordan, or Joanna Shoup, please leave them down in the comments because their Christmas novellas in here were excellent. And if you are looking for something to read this Christmas, I would highly recommend the spined up of novellas. My next four star read is The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. So this is the illustrated version that's illustrated by John Rocco and I actually read this out loud with my kids and then we watched the movie together. Um, the movie is not a good adaptation at all. I'm sure you probably, probably already know that. Um, we're really looking forward to the show coming out, hoping that it's better than that movie was, but this is a reread for me. Well, I read the book before. I never read the illustrated version before, but um, I think I enjoyed this better the first time around, probably just because it was so new and I had never read a fictionalized something like this that was about Greek gods. I loved Greek mythology when I was in um, junior high, and so the first time I read the story, I was just blown away by it. Um, I enjoyed getting to see my kids' reactions to it this time around. They just, they loved it so much. They always wanted to keep reading every time that I came to, you know, when my voice started to give out every day, they always wanted to keep reading more. So this is, this was a lot of fun and I definitely would recommend this version. Um, it has, ooh, it has really beautiful illustrations. That really added a lot to the story, I thought. So I'm hoping that they make more in this series into the illustrated versions. My next four star read is Fair as a Star by Mimi Matthews. This is another NetGalley arc and this one came out in July. This one is the first in her new series called The Victorian Romantics, I believed. So this is a Victorian romance. It's definitely a sweet romance. There's only kissing in this one. Um, and also, I didn't mention a little bookshop of love stories. I believe that one only has kissing. It was closed door if anything else happened. So, yeah, I know some people like to know that. So I just thought I would throw that in there. Anyway, back to Fair as a Star. So this is a Victorian romance. It follows our main character whose name is Beryl. So Beryl has been out of town for a while. She went to Paris with her aunt. Um, and she has come back in town back to where her fiance is waiting for her. This book is unique in that it tackles the topic of depression in the Victorian era. I don't think I've ever read about this in a historical romance. Now in this book it's called Melancholy or Melancholia and 
Beryl has suffered with this ever since she turned 13 and her mother and her mother has always like tried to hide it or tried to you know just basically tell her it'll pass or it's gonna be okay and um, the doctors of the time period don't really know how to treat this for her and she's just very despairing over it and when she comes back and is faced with marrying this man who she really respects and feels like it's going to be a bit a good match but she doesn't really love him she feels even more depressed than she did before and yeah it's just her story and i don't want to tell you what happens any more than that but i will say that Mimi Matthews is one of my favorite historical romance authors. She just has this way of writing about history that lets you know that she is really educated and has researched her topics without seeming condescending to her reader or talking down to you or, you know, over explaining things to you. It's just a really lovely way of writing and I just love her books and I will read anything that she writes and this one was definitely a little bit more quiet and um, understated, I think, than some of the other books of hers that I've read. Um, there wasn't as much angst. The main characters were just much more like sweet and even and yeah, so the story was like really sweet and even. There wasn't like a whole lot of angst or drama that happened in this one. So I would recommend this if that sounds at all interesting to you. I don't think you'll be disappointed in Mimi Matthews' writing. My last four-star read was The Case of the Missing Marquess by Nancy Springer. This is the first in the Enola Holmes mystery series. I have had this on my shelf for a while ever since um, Anne from Elizabeth Ann Reads recommended this, but I just hadn't picked it up yet. And then they put out the trailer for the movie that's about to come out and it looked fabulous and I was like I have to pick up my copy I have to read this before the movie comes out I think the movie comes on Netflix like September 22nd somewhere in there yeah so this follows Enola Holmes and she is the sister of Sherlock Holmes it starts on her 14th birthday because she wakes up and her mother is not there um, no one in the house seems to know what's happened to her so Enola basically embarks on this big journey to try and figure out exactly what has happened to her mother. You get to see Sherlock and Mycroft in this book, which was a lot of fun, and you just get to follow along with her on this big adventure. There ends up being sort of two mysteries woven into the story, and Anola is just a lot of fun. She's a great character, I think, to follow along with. The mystery wasn't amazing but I think probably because this is written for a younger audience than I am reading it from um, but I definitely think that like young teens would probably really really enjoy this and probably give it five stars I mean I gave it four stars and I'm not the target audience but I definitely am going to read the rest of this series I thought it was a great start to a, this series that sounds like it's gonna be fantastic so yeah okay and then the next book is also from NetGalley and it is Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting, or is it Helena Hunting? I'm not sure where the emphasis on that name is, but this one came out in July, I believe, and this one, I don't know if I'm giving it four and a half or five stars. On Goodreads, I went ahead and rounded it up to five, but I really enjoyed this book. I wasn't expecting to like this as much. It really surprised me. I don't know like sometimes I feel like you just read books that really are just exactly what you need and that's what this was this was just a whole lot of fun so this follows a young woman named Blair whose passion is baking and she has just opened up a brand new cupcake and cocktail bar and it's called buttercream and booze or is it booze and buttercream I can't remember which way that goes but anyway it is just a really cute shop and a really cute idea. I felt like I loved hearing about the cupcakes and the cocktails. That part was just fantastic. Basically, right as she's starting to open up the shop, she hears loud noises from the bar next door and she goes over there to figure out what's going on and it's called the Nightcap, but it's the K-N-I-G-H-T Nightcap. Um, 
because the owner's last name is Knight. It's like this really cute play on words. This book was just so cute. So anyway, she goes over there and it's like this lumberjacky type of bar with all this red plaid stuff and um, the loud noises that he's doing renovations. He's basically putting in an ax throwing area into the bar. He's been revamping the bar for his grandfather. And so the book is basically there back and forth. They're fighting and figuring out how they're going to make this work. They have to have these two essentially competing bars right next to each other. Um, at first they really butt heads and it's just, I loved their back and forth. They had so much great banter. Blair is a really fun character. I really loved her. She was hilarious. The bar owner next door, his name is Ronan. He was so swoony. He's like my new book boyfriend, I'm pretty sure. Um, I just, I loved them. They were so much fun. You get to meet Blair's family who are really eccentric and the parts that they are in was like uncomfortable and funny at the same time. I can't say enough good things about this book. Um, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. It was heartwarming and fun and I don't want to ruin anything. I want to keep saying more, but I don't want to ruin the book for you. So just go and check this one out. If you are into like rom-coms, this is the perfect book. Go read it. So after talking about it again, I'm thinking maybe it does deserve a five stars. It's, it was a really fun book. Then the last book that I read in August is a definite five star and my favorite book of the month and that was The Switch by Beth O'Leary. So this book I actually had an audiobook e-arc, is that how you say it? An audiobook arc through NetGalley and so I listened to most of this through that and I loved this book so much. So this came out in the US I think on August the 18th or 11th. Either way you can definitely get your copy now. This one follows Eileen and her granddaughter whose name is Lena and Lena has been having a really hard time getting over the loss of her sister and she is basically having panic attacks and not being able to deal with things at work which is totally unlike her. She normally has everything together and her boss finally suggests to her, you have to take time off. You need to take a vacation and just take some time for yourself. So during this time off, she ends up visiting her grandmother and they decide to switch lives. Um, Eileen is going to go to London and live in Lena's flat with her roommates and pursue a dating, an online dating life where there's a bigger pool of men and Lena is going to go live in her grandmother's house out in the country and she's going to take care of all of her neighborhood watch duties and take care of everything else, the dog walking, all these responsibilities that her grandmother has. So I just, I loved their relationship so much. The grandmother and the granddaughter and then the mother is in here as well. I loved all the explorations of grief that went on in here. They were so relatable to me. And I feel like I'm going to cry just talking about this book. I love the grandmother so much. I feel like we don't get to see elderly characters and books like this that often. And the grandmother is like, I think she was like 81 or 82. And I just, I loved her so much. She moved into that London flat and really just lived her best life. I mean, she became friends with Lena's friends. She helped them out so much. She gave them great advice. She did so much in London and she got into the online dating scene. I just, she was such a great character. And I really enjoyed Lena as well. Everything that went on with Lena back at her grandmother's house was so heartwarming too. I just, I loved this book so much. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, I know some people have been talking about, you know, to adjust your expectations with this book because this author's other book, um, The Flat Chair, was a romance, which I have not read yet. But this one is not a romance. There are some romantic elements to it, but it's definitely not the biggest theme in this book. It's definitely more of a family relationship story as well as just basically following these two women's lives and how they deal with the grief in their life and move on and just live their best lives and become their best selves. And 
As far as the audiobook goes, I loved the two women that read the parts of Lena and Eileen. So the book goes back and forth between the two of them, and I thought that the voice actors were perfect. I loved the audiobook, so if that is something that you want to check out, I would definitely recommend it as well. And I will definitely be rereading this and recommending it to everyone that I know. I loved this book so much. I hope I didn't just get your expectations really, really high. I will just throw it out there that it's not like this is a fast paced moving book where tons of things happen. It's definitely a character driven book and I feel like you have to fall in love with both of the characters probably to enjoy this. I've heard other people say that, you know, they really enjoyed one of the characters but not the other one. So they didn't enjoy it as much as I did. But I just loved every single aspect of the book. I loved Beth O'Leary's writing and I will definitely be reading The Flat Cheer and whatever else she comes out with. So yeah, I loved, I loved this book. It was so good. So those are all the things that I read during the month of August. It was definitely a good, an up and down reading month. I feel like I mostly had three stars, which none of the three star books were bad books. They just, you know, didn't make me feel all the crazy emotions that I felt with The Switch and Kiss My Cupcake. But I was so thankful to have found two books that I absolutely love during the month of August. So let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. Let me know what your favorite book was that you read during the month of August. Be sure to follow me on Instagram or Goodreads if you want to follow along with what I'm reading during the month and that way I can check out what you're reading as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.